Today's episode of The Chop Shop is brought to you by our good folks over at Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code THECHOPSHOP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using the code THECHOPSHOP. Man, this is beautiful. I can feel it in the air. Welcome to the Chop Shop. I am Eddie James. Next to me is my brother from another mother. Fastest hands in all the tri-state, goddammit. He is a VIP, which stands for very Italian person. DJ React. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, what's happening? Yeah, what's happening? We what's got, we, we got, happening? we got, uh, we got the Zen Master tonight, baby. This man is a producer, content creator, sound designer, beat influencer, world traveler, co-founder of the really, really dope Controller Rise. Uh, head of side chain game. Just a, a walking cool for real. And one of the illest producers I know, Mr. Stolen Drums. The Bob Ross of Beats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They say he's the Bob Ross of Beats, man, but man, he's much cooler than Bob Ross. Stolen Drums, everybody. Atlanta's finest. Atlanta GA, baby. My man. What yeah. up, Stolen? What up, though, man? Right. That was a beautiful introduction, man. Thank you so much for that, bro. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, yeah, yeah, man. I appreciate y'all having me, man. I was about to go Hell crazy yeah. and be like, yeah, I mean, you know, pick up and say, uh, yeah, <laughs> six million music streams. <laughs> five, mil- five million video views. Oh, yeah, you got to do all that. Yeah, no. And Bob Ross but, is a cool motherfucker, man. He's a... Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. They don't get too much cooler than bro, man. That's... I don't know. Nah, you kind of, I think you kind of cooler, man, because when I see you on your video and everything, I mean, I mean, we're going to do some clips with your video. Like people don't understand people. A lot of people know, but stolen drums, man, is he on a whole nother level, man. I appreciate and the music. It. Sounds like it. Yeah. Music, the video, just <laughs> everything's back there. Where the plants at? First of all, you said a lot man, of plants. Man. Yeah. It got really cold. They didn't make it, bro. I came in here one day. Oh yeah. shit! We had like was uh, that in uh, December? Yeah, I was there in December, bro. And when y'all had some freezing going on, that's it. So like, my shed is in my backyard, and it's it's uh-huh. it's pretty well insulated, but it's not perfect. And uh, we had like a, oh, you got two, you got two spots. Uh, this is a little shed, little tool shed in the backyard type of situation. Uh-huh. But uh, <laughs> when I walked in here one day in the morning, the plants was frozen, bro. Like solid, right? <laughs> it was, whatever, whatever uh, the pita shit is for for plants, I'm calling. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty. Telling. Yeah, I'm guilty. I don't yeah. got no defense. I'm guilty <laughs> of shit. I let them plants. I let the plants go, bro. I couldn't do nothing about it. Oh man, you know you are from Atlanta, GA, but your sound is worldly. It's just cool, man. Like that, I actually get a chance to. Well, we get a chance to sit and talk to you, man. Finally, I know we talk sometimes off but not enough man but i, I i'm really interested and we're really interested to know and the people are interested to know about um the man behind the sound um there's not too many producers man who sound like you just the texture the layers the warmth of uh the tracks and uh hopefully we can get some answers out of that i'm not even that, so you know do my best man we'll get it popping Growing up in um in, in Atlanta, GA, um, a lot of influences, and I'm sure a lot of stuff going on in on the radio. Um, speak to how um what you were gravitating towards uh in your earlier years in Atlanta music. Man, I I've been in Atlanta for um since we came out in 2005 the first time, and then left for a little bit, came back in like 2013, and been here okay. ever since. So a little over like 10, 12 years, something like that. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so, so, where did you grow up? Everywhere. My my people were in the military, so we moved around a lot. My family's from Detroit, so Wayne County's on my birth certificate. We stayed there oh, for a little okay. while. Okay. Yep. And then um, you from the D, West Side or East Side? West. All right. I'm I'm, I'm 12th Street representative. Okay. Right yeah, Tillman Street. Rosa. Ro- yeah. yeah. South. You said Taylor. Tillman. 
Oh, I was about to say, because, yeah. man, my people, all my people on Hazelwood, okay. Linwood, okay. neighborhood, and Taylor, right right next yeah. to us. Yes, yeah, Rosa Park. Shout out to all my 12th Street family. There you go. You know they yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I guess speak to uh, your influences, uh, being, a, being a military child and moving around and hearing all kinds of music. Man, so you just get like uh, I got I got an uncle that's a DJ that owns a record store, you know, as, as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I got a grandmother, you know, from Arkansas that listens to the blues. I got a mom, you know, that, that comes of age in, in the 80s and is a jazz, mm-hmm. you know, fanatic. Um, and is in the jazz and fusion and funk and, and my father's in the same mm-hmm. bag. So you just get that, that mix and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. and then being from the, you know, Detroit and then having my uncle with the record store, he was putting me on, on all the, all the new hip hop records that would come out. So he, you okay. know, he hit the distributor, fill up his store. So he would have, yeah. you know, I got to give you this tape. You need to have this. And you know what I mean? Like you need to listen to that. So he was kind of looking out for me in that respect. Speak about your uh, your early influences with hip hop, like uh, you know, not not here to yeah. th- about aging uh, anybody and like that, but um, I'm interested to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, <laughs> man, uh, I remember. Uh, well, shit, early, early, like I remember this. It's it's full circle, right? Because I remember early Outkast yeah. stuff. Um, okay, you know, early memories, super, super early. You get, you know, African band body and all that shit. Um, okay, but yeah, you get early Outkast is like when I was kind of like I knew what I was listening to when it was on purpose. Uh, okay, Wu Tang and, and 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 Tribe and you know all that stuff. That's 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 me as a kid listening to. Um, okay, you know Nas and everything. To be honest with you, like I I'm, I was really uh, just fucking glued to my radio, listening to anything I could that was hip hop related. Right, you, know? you do it very well. You know, um, your production is is stellar. Um, I heard you on the mic. You you, you get busy on the mic oh, too. Man. I think I think that you should, you should do a little bit more. Just speak to how when it was really like okay, I really want to get into uh, you know being a musician. Were any musicians in in the house? Nah, my mother my mother can okay. sing, um, but we didn't have any musicians. Uh, okay, you know, like I said, my uncle DJ get a little bongo in his room. Okay. And you know you had all the records, but yeah, no, no, no musicians, man. I'm like the first one. Yeah, I mean, it just speaks to your curiosity too, you know. Because yeah. I see you, I see you um, on your videos, and you know, you just pull the guitar, and and you you actually just don't care. Like you, you, you're looking. You know, it's almost like you're practicing, but while you're practicing, you're recording. This shit's coming out dope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I like, I love that about producers who are curious, man. It's it's just better to be curious, man, and to not try it. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, you just gotta find a I'm line, cool. bro. I don't have like, you know, a lot of a lot of his that have reference or context for like what they play. And they knew a great yeah. player coming up so they know what that shit sounds like or feels like. I don't have none of that shit. So I'm just in here, you know, trying to find something that works. You know, like I I couldn't tell you what scale or key I'm in really I'm not knowledgeable in that respect yet. I'm learning, you know what I mean? But I'm not quite yeah. I'm not quite I'm not there. I think you're being a little modest because your music, uh, I mean. Bro, I don't, it's it's all feel. And and I play, okay. like I learned how to play instruments like babies talk, right? So I would just turn on music and push keys until until uh-huh. it didn't sound stupid. <laughs> it's uh-huh. just, no, 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 no. Know. I mean, I, do, I find myself doing the same thing too. React knows, you know, I'm yeah. sit here. React's more of a um, technical guy with, uh, you know, keys and scales. He knows. Yeah. He knows chords, but. You know what's interesting about your music is, um, at least for me, when I hear it, um, there are layers. Your chords seem to, you know, and your bass lines, they all, it's like a puzzle, man. And they, they do, it's just amazing when when you're done with it. Because I've seen you put together music and you just start with, with like just the littlest things, man. You make the, Sometimes you make the littlest things just... <sighs> That's one thing I admire about you, man. We we're also here to give you your flowers too, man, for real, because um a lot goes into your music and I think the masses, more people need to know about stolen drums, man. Man, I appreciate um, that, bro. Other outside the beat beat our beat community, which are well known and hopefully the this show reaches a lot of people as well. Obviously, uh it is in Taiwan, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean like Yeah, we're charting in Taiwan, let's go. baby. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, we hit the top ten in Taiwan, number eight fantastic. for a Man, couple weeks, I think. Last time I checked, there was a lot of people in Taiwan, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, shit. 
You know, we'll, we'll take anything. You know, no, that's beautiful, bro. Um, you are an MC. Did you start What's off regular spit at sixteen? Come on, <laughs> right? right. Put him on the yeah. spot. <laughs> He'd be freestyling too. I see. I see him sometimes. He just be like, hey, being that you MC. As you go through the process of making a record, is there like an idea for a song that's running through your head as you're composing something? That's a great question. I think like um, I'm always coming from the perspective of like something could happen on the record or like there's always space for a little, you know what I mean? Uh, that type of thing. Right, right. Because I'm not a virtual, like I don't, I don't really play like virtuoso type of shit, you know? And so it's like real, real easy for me to leave room for a vocal. Do you find it easier to do that because you rap? Mm-hmm. You can hear it. It's like second nature. Like you, you kind of always coming from that perspective of like, you know, there could be another element here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which right. is cool too. Cause the flip side of that coin is when you do that, you tend to not overcomplicate the stuff that you're creating. You know what right. I mean? That's right. And so then you can sit in, which is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. I sent Eddie something two days ago and I was like, yo, it's dope. I sent them a bunch of some chops. And he was like, don't fucking touch it. Don't. I yeah. Like, yo, I'm gonna add this. Like, don't <laughs> touch don't, it. Don't, he man. Like, don't he, touch it. He like, body the sample too, man. Yeah. I was like it was a Valerie Simpson joint. I was yeah. Like, Ooh. What I love about um, stolen drums music is um, I, I sometimes I don't I don't even want to hear any MCs on it. Like you have mastered that. You know, a lot of people say, okay, I wish that there was an MC on this, man. Like on a lot of joints that I hear um, on some of these beat tapes by a lot of producers. But you have mastered the, that's why I call you the Zen master, man, because every time I, I sit and listen to your joints, they slap, first of all. But there's something that's very calming about your music. No, it's just, just therapy for me, bro. I definitely started this whole stolen drums thing during like a, you know, a challenging period, if you will. Then I was like my little escape. You know what I mean? Let me queue up the MP and chop up some records and kind of not be in, in this little situation I'm in for a couple hours. I think that just became the aesthetic. And then I listen to records, too. Like, the music I'm listening to is more, you know, kind of like older, eclectic, fusion jazz, usually from the past. But none of that shit has a lot of vocals. Or if they do, it's, you know, the way that stuff is mixed and, and put together isn't, like, contemporary rap records so were you experimenting with sounds back then like um did you gravitate towards anything like um you know i just say because i i know i've I heard your dj sets before too uh a while back when you were on facebook running and i've heard you play some um some, some brazilian like funk joints um you know i know nobody's just i know i know when people are not faking and I know what people are faking, you know, like just oh, let me just play this, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to look cool. You know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. bro? Like I know that it runs deep, because um, I can hear it in your music as well, in your percussion. Um, but uh, when do you actually start like really digging for records, like like the, the good stuff, like other than you know, just trying to find loops? Because we are just we are at one point just uh, looking for. I mean, I know I was at one point. In the nineties, I was just looking for. They just go to jazz section or to find a, a horn, and you know. So I'm looking up, and you know, Eddie Harris or whatever, you know, whoever on the horn. Mm-hmm. But um, but eventually, I really started letting the records play, and I'm like, wow, this is what my my grandfather, and my dad was really talking about, you know, because my father's be like, oh, he's skipping a record so much. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I was like looking for the loop, Dad. He's like, what the fuck is the loop? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you know, he's like, you can let the records play, yeah. And uh, so I started doing that, but yeah. Uh, how about yourself? That shit came later, um, because I okay. I definitely listened like that for a long time. Like, let me find the pieces mm-hmm. I can I can snatch out of this record to make my own little thing. Um, yeah. but that that changed probably late twenties, early thirties. You know, maybe even a little bit later okay. on. And I started listening yeah. like, nah, this actually is crazy. Who, who's who's playing? What is this? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who put this? Yeah. Who arranged this mother? Why does it sound like this? Yeah. What, what else can I get that sounds like this? Actually, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm date myself, man, because you know, um, I, I guess you know, I was looking for loops, but back when I was a kid, man, I used to look on the back of the record cover like, oh man, like you know, on a Quincy Jones joint, like. Mm. Oh shit, that's Lewis Johnson. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, one of the brothers Johnson, whoever, mm-hmm. or 
whoever on the drums. I'm like, man, like, and then the brothers Johnson came out. I was like, I want to be like them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, when you were look- <laughs> I did, bro. That's what I was, that's what I was telling. Um, I had a conversation when we had uh focus. Yeah. Um, on the show, I told focus, I said, bro, I, I loved your dad, man. I was like, I was your dad. He's like, you know, basically what you talking about? Like, I was like, because everybody wanted to be Nile Rogers with the pick, mm. you know, the pick, you know, the, cause it was cool. That was the actual real chic sound, but I had no choice. My brother was like, yeah, I'm Nile Rogers and you're the other dude. I'm like, <laughs> well, the other dude is, that's Bernard Edwards, man. That's, yeah. they're, they're both chic. So I was like, yeah, I'll play the bass. And then I just fell in love with his sound. And then, you know, you start realizing that they're playing for like Sister Sledge and, you know, all those groups, man. Um, I was like, yeah, man, that's that's how I actually really started. And shout out to Focus, too, man. It's a solid dude. Oh, man. Focus is wonderful, man. Yeah. Just a man. So so seasoned. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you stayed a student, I believe if you stayed a student, then then you're all right. It's okay to master something. You, you, yeah, we master all of us. We master, we, we got the hours in, we master our, our crafts. But it's always, I don't want to be the master. At least I don't want to be the master. I want to be the student. That's what you learn when you master some shit, bro. You learn how far away you actually are. The more yeah. I learn, the more I realize, the more I can see the distance. Like, that shit seemed real close when I didn't know shit. And then the more I, the <laughs> more I learn, the more I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. There's a whole nother thing happening under here that I'm not even noticing. Like, like bass lines for instance like if you're listening to mm-hmm. you know somebody play that really can play there's all these little mutes and like little touches and shit that you wouldn't even notice at first until you yeah. can, until you can get it under your fingers and play a little bit and then you're like oh no nah, that how do you even get over there like how'd you get that yeah. little rhythmic thing to happen like you know it's a lot of nuance in there it's the curiosity man that's what i said about about you i can hear it in your and and all of your kits, man. I used to, you know, and we'll talk about your kits a little, um, in your sound design a little bit later on. But I heard the maturation from, the, you know, the slappy drums. It, it was stellar back then, but now it's completely, oh, like a world away. Like you, so so somewhere along the line, along the line you were just like, I'm just gonna learn, 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 learn. Yeah, man. I just dumped all resources gained by using, you know, by making and, and selling drum packs. Right back into drum packs, and then the studio, yeah. the the drums, the microphones, the all that shit. You know, time spent on just figuring out how things were done. Like, how did you mm-hmm. get the Sarah Smile drum sound? Like, what is that? What microphones were used? How did you put them up? Where were you at? What studio was that? Who engineered it? Yeah. What kind of tape? What the formula was in that tape? What what transformers Ooh. was in that goddamn tape? You know that desk? Like, see what I mean? React. <laughs> it's an infinite rabbit hole, bro. Like you can keep digging as much as you want to, bro. Investing in yourself, man, that's important. Mm-hmm. And then when you get close, woo, that's a crazy feeling, man. When you like, when you have that idea in your head and you execute, and it's like close to what yeah. you want it. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a, good a feeling. great feeling. And the higher your resolution gets, the better the feeling is, because like you know yeah. that mm. little nuance, like you you can hear them, and then when you start getting them in your mind, you're like, you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, I'm here. Like, yeah, we're playing the same <laughs> yeah. game right now. I can only yeah. play it for two bars, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm playing, yeah. you know? no, but you know what? You know, it's funny because, you know, um, when I see you, um, when you're promoting, uh, you know, whatever pack you're coming out with, you know, the, um, it was a uh, baked. Yeah. Fresh baked. Yeah. Fresh baked. Yeah. Um, you were like, you were so giddy about it. You're like, Ooh, this, this right here. Yeah, man. Just like a kid in a candy store, and, it, and you actually made it, but you're super, super duper excited still, man. Yeah. And that's the, that's that passion right there. It's that sound you like. Yeah. You can you got a sound. Yeah, that's just like beating no, a video you, you game. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, that shit is <laughs> crazy, bro. Like when you when you get a sound, and this is in all aspects. Yeah. Like it, I was the same way. I've been the same way the whole time. Like making beats on my little coffee table with my MP and my SP, and like uh-huh. I got a sound. I was charged up. You couldn't tell me shit. I was just yeah. on my skateboard two hours a day listening to my own beats. Like, I didn't want to hear nobody else's music at all. <laughs> just listening to my beat. So speak to that. You said uh, SP to MP. Like, um, your first piece of gear that you were sampling on. Um, let's speak about yeah, that. I had, like, a long time. Like, so I started producing in 2001. And I was, like, the guy. Like, say what? Yeah, yeah. That was my, that's when I first, first started. I bought an MPC 60 <sighs> and an ASR 10. I had a decent job. Right after I got out the Air Force. And by the way, thank thank you for your services. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. 
Yeah. But yeah, so I got, you know, NPC, ASR, and I don't know if you remember the Makai DPS recorders. Yes. I, I, I had one of those, you know what I'm saying? And I was, I was, I was getting it, boy. I opened my little, you know, I little apartment, got a couple mics. The homies was coming through recording records. That's how he was getting down. When did you say I want to be the producer and the engineer? As soon as I needed some beats. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause you were rhyming. Yep. I was, yeah, I was rapping okay. and I, was, I remember rapping all over DJ Babu records and Dilla records and, and whatever else I can get my hand on. Speaking of rapping. Yeah. Rapidy raps. Well, we got, we got a little something. Oh man. And then we talk about. His name is MC. Uh, uh, he was Ox back then. Yeah. The days, right? Yeah, they used to call me yeah. Ox, man. Attention, basketball fanatics. It is game time. That's right. NBA season is back. You already know. Knicks tape all day long, but it's okay. Even if you're not a Knicks fan, we got an MVP slam dunk for you this season. That's right. Our friends over at Manscaped, they just put out some game-changing stuff. This trimmer is 100% your new MVP. It's going to give you that nothing-but-net feeling once you're done. The brand-new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped. Do not be the guy who fouls out in the grooming department. Be the guy that scores 20% off and free shipping with the code the chop shop at manscaped.com. Get the lawnmower 5.0 Ultra and get your grooming game in championship form. Let me break down the play by play for you real quick. Inside this package, the star of the show, the lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. This is their fifth generation trimmer. It has two interchangeable blades, it's two razors in one. There's a standard blade. For taking a little bit off the top and their new foil blade, which will keep you nice and smooth wherever you decide to shave. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra also features dual LED spotlights. That is right. You could shave your balls in the dark. Trust me, I tried it the other day in complete darkness. No nicks, no cuts, complete darkness, smooth balls. Don't forget, if you're taking it on the go, Manscaped's got you covered. This puppy comes with the travel case already. It even has a travel lock feature on the device itself to avoid any accidental powering and weird looks at the airport. We are on the cutting edge of cutting pubes, people. Upgrade your ball trimmer and your life will follow. Once again, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code THECHOPSHOP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the our code, the chop shop at manscaped.com. I could promise you, you've never seen a ball trimmer look like a spaceship. This thing is a spaceship. Get yours today from our folks over at Manscaped. Okay. Uh, no, we're not going, you know, we, we don't, we don't have all the ox records, but you, you, you sort of just gave me, you gave me a little pause, a little nugget. Wow. <laughs> okay. It went, you know, First of all, selling drums for, is an OG when it comes to uh, doing music for uh, video games. You're into video games. Hey, that was my first uh, Have, first music check was video games. See, yep, uh, that's wonderful. We 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 have a we have a joint. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already embarrassed. <laughs> it had to be embarrassed, man. I mean, I was, you know, you know but it it sounds like you know they probably just you know listen. If I'm playing a video game, like all right, you know they got they got some rapidy raps in here. You know what I'm saying? I know you, I know you can MC MC man. But when it comes to that check, boy, you know who did the track? First of all, uh, it depends on which one it is. Okay, there's a lot so, of uh, soul. I, I actually produced that. Oh, you did? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We had to get you back. Oh, man. (laughs) You was like, yeah, I ain't sampling nothing. I'm getting all the bag. Exactly. What year was this? Probably like 2005. Maybe six. The first verse is actually kind of hard. Uh, yeah, man. It's kind of hard. The first verse is kind of hard. Uh, 
open eyes, I define my direction and cast my light in time that shines my protection. I shed blood just to rhyme and perfection and move at God's speed, no time for reflection. It's evident in the movement that he steps with a monster has a yeah, it is. kid on some next shit, but never live with the flow beyond weapons to style, beyond ripping the hearts from rhymes kept in. Shit, so he can't fade out. It's too much ground to stake to let the beat play out. It's like time stops. What will he say now? What can you move when they try and put what he say down? See, that's a discipline. I push mute on Yeah, this is. Let's go hard, man. Especially for a video game, man. Look, look at React's face. He's like. <laughs> Like, can, can you believe that 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 the Zen Master? Yeah, man, I was rapidy rap. That checkity check was tight. I already know. <laughs> we got paid. Yeah, we got paid. Hell yeah! To hear shit like that, and then you know, to hear things, you know, you go from that to something like this. They call you uh, side chain, side chain gang now. Yeah, man. Oh, what is it called? Yeah, side, side chain society. Yeah, side chain. You know what's crazy? Like that wasn't side chain. Believe it or not. Interesting. Like you got the SP on your desk. That was actually 303 vinyl sim compression. Oh. But I was just, I was misusing it intentionally to get to get that thing to happen. I'm very ignorant when it comes to. Uh, yeah, Eddie didn't even know what uh, side chaining was until I didn't. like a month ago. Good, <laughs> until I told him it what wasn't it was. a month ago. It was it was literally when I did the um, the Hassan Mackey. Um, oh okay, shit! So a few months, a few months ago, Hassan Mackey, man. Yeah, why you yeah, yeah. and um, our homie Maddie uh, was like, "Yo, how'd you get the bass to side chain like that?" And I was like, "Huh." Well, I knew it's I, I heard a sound chain sound chain through you. What's a side chain? That's exactly what I said. I just I I'm just I mean, I don't I don't have time for that. I've been I've been sampling records and kicks and snares since the early 90s, but I I've never had time to to sit and learn the terminology. So, yeah. That's um, okay. He explained to me what it was. And I was like, "Oh, Okay. That's that rabbit hole, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we all, everybody yeah. gets like different shit that they're excelling at or different things that they got interested in or learning, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, but you were just saying like, um, by doing something by mis- like almost attention, intentionally, unintentionally, intentionally wrong. You feel me? Right. Like, technically. Right. Te- right, right. And this is like, I think that was driving me not to want to listen to nobody else's shit, you know, because it was like, this doesn't really happen in too many other places. And I really like the way it feels. Yeah. So I want all my beats to feel like this. You know what I mean? And so yeah. then when I didn't hear that, I was like, uh, this ain't got that shit on it, though. Like, you know? <laughs> right. So I was really addicted to the fucking 303 vinyl sim. Like, like it was a drug, bro. Like, <laughs> I couldn't get off that yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to take the kick and drive it really loud, and everything else would be really low. And I would use the mm-hmm. compression to just crush everything until it until it evened out. Ooh. It's essentially side chaining, but it's not though. It's 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 using compression to get a similar thing. Right. And uh there was one of a bunch of different tricks that I used to use, but like, yeah, that shit that shit I liked it. Did you have a um like an OG engineer um or an OG pr- producer to sit sit with you or No, nah, hell no. Nah. So how do you how how you just I mean, we just read and stuff or Bro, you remember uh what was it? Pearson, Pearson made the mixing manuals and shit. I want to say Pearson. Yeah. Yeah, I all right. Fuck I'm a, I'm snitching on myself, rap snitches, <laughs> telling all their business. Um, <laughs> fucking, when I was that's what this show is about, yeah. little, giving us a little, just a little. I want, yeah, up. I want to say I was like, I don't remember how old I was when I did this shit. It had to be like super early twenties, bro. But I went to the library. We, you know, we still had a library. You had to go to and get books out. And I, I yeah. took out all of the mixing books, and just never bought the bitches back. <laughs> 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 and so I did that shit and then uh, I studied those for a while but it is a day after your ass still baby hey, like, if, yeah, if I looked I could probably still find some you know unpleasant messages somewhere a bill yeah true story, <laughs> true story. but uh I, yeah so I did that and then I took a when I, I went to community college for a little bit and I took an engineering class and flunked out terribly I mean you might have flunked out but boy oh boy you you can go back and probably teach that motherfucker. They should pay That's the you crazy part, to... bro. Yeah, I ended up honorarily <laughs> teaching at colleges and shit. Like, you know, like little... That's just I mean? crazy. Like, like, come teach at my school, yeah. bro. Come teach at this college. Like, I probably did 
a dozen of them damn Zoom sessions and shit over a pandemic, like just teaching college classes. Oh, shit. yeah. Nick's really good with all that stuff. All that technical, all you technical techies. Nerds, man. Gadget. Yeah. I, I'm a little nerdy when it comes, but I'm not. I'm just, I'm so ignorant. You're nerdy to different shit. That's all. Before I bought the 404, it was like a week ago. I bought it like a week ago, mm-hmm. but like up up to me buying yeah. it, I like literally studied it and I think I know it already. Yeah. Like nine, like 90% of it, like just things that I was like, I couldn't wrap my head around, you know, at mm-hmm. first, you know, it literally took me like 24 to 48 hours. Like I'm just like a, a like a fucking yeah. sponge, you know what I mean? But, you know, trial and error, obviously. Right. But like, you know, thanks to, you know, people like you, yeah. you know, on YouTube, you know, I learned the shit like. I mean, super quick, yeah, man. That's a you that's know, a big gotta, testament to fucking you know Rolling being intentional about how they made that thing, and and you know they had like a beta group for a long time and shit. Yeah, you know I hated on it, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. I I hated on it so bad when it first came out. Oh, the four hundred four, the Mark II specifically. Oh, the Mark II, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's because my approach was so basic. What'd you hate about it? You think? I mean, well, I, so I hated on it because I was going through my bullshit oh, at yeah. the time. But mostly, it was just so many buttons. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. is. Yeah, and there's a lot of sub menus, yeah. and you know, uh, all of it's intimidating to me, man. To be honest. Yeah, that's how it is, bro. Because it's like it's yeah. like being in a jet cockpit, and they just throw you in there, like, all right, bro, fly. Yeah. <laughs> like, which button is the only like? Because like, all right, so I was a resample guy on the original, like the OG four hundred four. And yeah. that shit was just like, sample, pad. Okay, cool. Sample, pad. Play some shit to the next pad. Play some shit to the next pad. And that's how mm-hmm. I used to make beats on there. If I made beats on there. Yeah. I usually used it just for like another processor, sound-wise. And so when it was like, you know, here's pattern and this and quantize and woo 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 And I was yeah. like, yo, this is OD for me, bro. I think it's crazy, though. And then now it has like, yeah, you can bust stuff yeah. and all kinds of It's actually yeah. amazing, though, bro. Like, don't get it fucked yeah, up. It's it actually is. an amazing device. Like, it's probably the right. cleanest sounding one so far. And it definitely has the most features. You could still resample and, and do all that shit like the way you would on the Fact. OG 404. Yeah, it's in there. It's in so, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't need to use pattern uh, pattern select yeah. for, like, you know, oh, build, look building at you, something. Rehack, yeah. Look at yeah, you, Look at you. Bro, I'm telling you, I learned this shit, I yeah. learned this shit quick thanks to, you know. But no, I I, uh, I think I think they crushed it, man. It took me a minute to wrap my head around it. And uh, after after a couple months of hating on that shit, I come to really The only fucking it. thing I don't understand, I'm going to, hold on, I'm going to show you what I don't understand. Okay. This is, this is the only, this is the only, this is the only fucking thing I don't what understand. Like, it's 2023. Like, are you, you got to be kidding me with these fucking double A batteries. That's actually come hard. On, no, I, I actually, I appreciate that. Really? You yeah. Think, I mean, like a, a built in battery would have been just so much better. That's fair. Like, I respect whatever. that. But it's something about double A's to just, you know, like, because, because I had the OG, that's cool to me. Uh, you know what I mean? You mean like a built-in battery, like type of shit that catch on fire type thing? Yeah, yeah bro. You can leave them shits in the 404 too long and they're going to melt. Yeah, <laughs> fucking battery terminals. Yeah. Get Remember back in the days them? you leave that shit in the toy? Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But no, yeah. I, think, I think they killed it, though. Like, that's my... After, no, no, for after, sure. Uh, after my hating period was over, I was like, yeah. this shit is actually shout, really Shouts to Rowan. We, lo- we love you, Rowan. Yeah, yeah. shouts to Rowan. Send yeah. us some 404s. Right, I keep telling that um, React's going to have to use his white privilege. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> fucking, this fucking Italian, guy. I'm, I'm serious, man. You know, but I mean, you're, you're Italian. Well, to get, a, uh, just, to get a, a, to get a, to get an SP, is that what you're saying? Yeah, man. Something, I, I said, but he, he already, he already did it already. Like the first month we had the Manscaped. Um, sponsorship. <laughs> Use the code the Chop Shop get twenty percent off to Manscaped dot com. Thanks. There it is. See, they saw value. No. Yeah, yeah, man. I was on the beta team for the uh for the four hundred four. Yeah, okay. I pretty early. You know. Speaking of, uh, I guess while we're on the topic of equipment, I mean, like, what's your what's your weapon of choice right now? Is it? The, I mean, is it the four hundred four? No, it's 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 everything in this room. Um, I put my little studio on hard mode. So now I'm trying to track directly to tape. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to get that off. Ooh. That's oh, like man. this week's challenge. <laughs> I learned how to cut tape in school. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Shouts to IAR. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. That was a uh, that was an interesting experience. I I didn't really appreciate it at the time because I was young. Yeah. I was I don't know, it was 2007, so I was, you know, in my early 20s. I just, I didn't really appreciate it at the time, you know, and now looking back, I'm like, shit, man, I wish I didn't go to school, wish I didn't go to class all fucking stoned and whatever I was, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I should have paid more attention, but yeah. That's how I go. That's Full dope. circle, man. Yeah, but that's dope, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, tape is crazy, bro. The more I got into sound, the more I realized, like, the, the, the equipment 
had a lot to do with what we was hearing and shit. What is stolen drums process? Um, is he he's automatically thinking drums first, or is it is it um some rhythms that you had, um, or some chops, or some records that you're thinking of first? But what is the what is your tracks usually start with? Your music always start with. It depends. I mean, you are stolen drums, but yeah, I'm, it's it. So today, it's it's let me make sure all this shit is in tune. <laughs> and everything works and I don't need to spray nothing with no deoxid and shit. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> and, and after that's cool, then it's like, okay. Um, a lot of times it's yeah. drums. I play, I just play out a bunch of drums and then I find some parts that I like and loop some shits up and then get to play another stuff on top and kind of iterate until uh-huh. I get something that's cool. Um, yeah. If I'm fucking with samples, then a lot of, a lot of times it'd be like, can I get this sample to do something interesting? And then I'll lay drums and then I'll lay whatever else mm-hmm. behind that. A lot of times, huh. you know, the composition, uh, I go the other direction when, when the stuff is already in there. You know what I mean? On the MP, I used to chop the drums or chop the samples up and then the samples would tell me what to do with the drums. What MP, you said you started off with a 60, right? I had a 60, yeah. but all this, all the yeah. recent, all the stolen drum stuff started with an XL. 2000 XL? Come on, man. Yeah. I had a 3000 in here for a little bit, but if I'm honest with you. Watch what you say. Right, right, right. Cause <laughs> the 3000 has that shit to it that's like this like uh, classic hip hop sound to it. However, yeah. the two the XL sounds shitty in a great way. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's like shitty in I mean, the right way. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's like mushy. Like and that mushiness, you can't get that out the 3000. Um no, you can't. No. I mean I, I guess I, w- I was very disappointed because, I, you know, I started off with the 60, and then I had the 62. Mm-hmm. No, I had a t- 1200 um, okay. and a 950, and then, actually, I'm t- I'm lying. I, we started off with a 60, okay. and then I had to break from a crew, mm-hmm. and I had the, the, the SP, and I was like, I took two steps backwards, but I figured out, I was like, all right, I need more sample time. I was cop the 950 from a car, mm-hmm. and w- used those together. And then I got the three thousand, man. And I was like, "This is it." I I used my three thousand literally for ten years. Yeah, she's a baddie. Ten, yeah. And then yeah, you had it for a while. I had it until for 10 I put years. you on a machine. No, you know what happened? No, remember I had. The, oh no, you had the four thousand. That's right. You I had, had the three four, and then the four. No, I had. I got rid of my three like a dummy. I mean, I I think it was uh, you know life be, life was lifing, and I had. I do what you gotta do. Uh. A young kid, and I was looking at equipment, and I was like, "Ooh, you selfish motherfucker, you!" <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I got the kid, and I'm sitting here out working super hard, and I'm looking at a three thousand dollar piece of a gear, like what? So that's when I got rid of it, and I inherited somebody's two thousand, and I hated it. I was so it was reversed. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. The reverse thing that what you were just saying, man. I I I, I absolutely hated it. I was like this, this I I didn't like anything about it. Um outside of um I didn't even like the wavelength that you can see the wave. Yeah, yeah. You know. And I was like first generation, you know, you can see the you can see the sample. Yeah. It's like I don't care about none of that right, shit. Right. This shit is this shit sounds terrible. It sounds horrible. <laughs> Right, so I got rid of that, and then I got the four thousand. It was just a huge monster. Yeah, that shit was OD. Of them, you know, I was like, I couldn't deal with that piece. That shit got too me many buttons. either, man. But I was like, oh, well, just Blaze is using it, so I was like, if if he's using it, then maybe I can rock with it for a while. And I got rid of it. And this joker got me a, a, a machine micro, and I wanted to throw that shit out the window. That's hilarious. Yeah, and then, <laughs> but I inherited that from him, and then I got the machine. So. Machine is tough, though. I love it. Yeah, I still, I still tough, use man. my MK3. Yeah. Um, I had one of them in here but, for a uh, little bit. I had a, uh, a plus. Like, I'm, I'm gonna keep it funky, bro. I at this point, mm-hmm. I, it doesn't matter. You use whatever to do anything. Oh no, it definitely yeah. doesn't. It yeah. definitely doesn't. But, I think, I think Native Instruments still needs to. They need to do something. Bro, I think they had it with that plus. That shit just crashed too much. The plus was crazy. It just crashed too much, man. It was cr- it was it. That was like I'm like, yeah, that was it, bro. They could have, you know what I mean? Like crash in what sense? Like uh Oh, it just froze all the time, man. Shit. Uh, I, I would I would try to load massive and it would just f- fucking yep. freeze. Bro, I, yeah, I got rid I of was shit. just chopping samples and doing nothing else one time. It had a couple banks of samples lined up and was making little joints. And it was just <laughs> like, Nope, you're done today. <laughs> 
That bitch just stopped. <laughs> it just, that was it. You had to cut it off to cut to, to unfreeze it and whatever you was working on. Everybody I know that has a machine plus doesn't even use it in standalone because it just it fucking freezes all the time. I'm I'm glad because um I was I was, I kept looking at it for like year like a couple years like man I just get the plus but then I was like what for? No, it's the same yeah, fucking it, thing. It is, man. <clears throat> The same thing, man. Yeah. Just same just shit. Just more crashing. Yeah. Right, right. It's the same shit. Just crashes more. <laughs> Straight up. Just the native instrument. Says, yo, yeah. sh- shout out to native. Yo, instrument. if they ever go back and get that firmware together, it's a wrap because that workflow is incredible. For whatever reason, yeah. in standalone mode, it feels better than on the right. computer. I, I guess because you're so focused on the hardware itself, like it's the one if it don't crash, but it crashes. Maybe I wasn't. I didn't hear. You, you are using what? Um, like beat wise or right you, now you in a box or, a bunch yeah. of, a bunch of instruments and a tape machine Ooh. um that's so crazy yeah, i'm that's trying for it, it. don't don't but, get don't let it you fool you to his music <laughs> i'm getting dragged in here baby don't let it fool you <laughs> <laughs> um before that though it was ableton in the tape machine so i'll do all my loops and shit in ableton and then put them on a put them on a mixer and then just do all my live you know what i'm saying movements or whatever with the pans and you know tracks or whatever um you're right. So it's a combination of DAW and tape machine. All your chops and everything is Ableton? Simpler? Depends. Depends on the record. Sampler? Um, some some NPCs, some SB shit, some Ableton. Okay. I, I, I like this program called Luna a lot from UAD. That shit is hard. Uh, ah. I, I made some shit in there. The last one I sent, right before the sh- joint, I made in there. And then a mm-hmm. couple other pieces that's probably in there. I couldn't tell you which one. but You, you spent some time abroad. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Oh city. yeah, that's right. Yeah, you spent some time in uh, his his land. Yeah, his, yeah. His, the mother, his mother. Oh yeah, yeah. My first yeah, son was born in Italy. Yep, Sicile, Sicile oh, yeah. Hospital. Yep. Oh shit. Probably Italiano, poco, mi dispiace. Only a little bit. No. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's speaking. He's speaking your language. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Call me off. Call me off guard with that one. <laughs> yeah. When the moon hits your eyes. <laughs> oh, cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> yeah. That's a boy. We, we was in uh, northern Italy, man, in uh, Friuli Mountains and shit. Or Friuli, Italy, Dolomite Mountains, which is tight because it's Dolomite Mountains. That shit had me charged up. Da- the yeah, Dolomite like, well, Mountains? Well, the Dolomite? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I'm in the right place. What kind of, what kind of soul brother shit you right. got going out here in Italy? <laughs> but yeah, we was up there. I was up there for a couple years, man. My first son was born up there. Uh, shit, really... I bought my first cool car there, like, you know. I went to okay. the studio to rap, like, somebody else's shit for the first time mm-hmm. out there. I met one of my best friends. Uh, he's a badass engineer. He does a lot of work now. Do you think um, th- uh, being over there uh, uh, in it- Italy helped shape? Um, Me now? Were they pieces of, of uh, yes. Hell yeah, for sure. Because you get, like, this opportunity that when you get out the country and people kind of, like, take you at face value. Because I was like, I'm a rapper. I'm good at this shit. And they was like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? That was it. Full <laughs> yeah. stop. And they was like, rap. And I rapped. And they was like, hey, that'll work. Cool. Hop on stage. Go rap. Fuck out of here. That, that works for me. Fuck out of here. Go rap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You can rap. Get right. out of here. That's the energy. It's like, yo, my man, he's really good at right. that, actually. That fuck, you heard that shit? He's good. Put him on stage. He, he can do it. Yeah. And then um, yeah. put him, get the fuck right. out. Did you feel? Did stage. you feel um at ease over there? Like when you were when you're doing that? I mean, um, was there pre- was the pressure different? Way different. It was so oh. much easier yeah. to kind of maneuver. We used to go to the spot called yeah. Boobies, <laughs> which is wild. But it was a little yeah, jazz yeah. cafe spot, and the dude who ran. I like it. to go to a spot called Boobies. <laughs> yeah, but Booby was a dude <laughs> from Detroit. He made cheese steaks. Oh, shit. You feel me? And then like I used to go over there and hang out in Bush. You just you just killed the whole. Yeah, movie. it wasn't what you thought it was. It's okay. No. That's a spot right. called the Miller Lira, but that's a whole nother. I have a cousin named Booby, by the way. Yeah, I do. That's what's up. I feel like I feel like that's a common <laughs> black cousin name. It, I definitely do have a cousin called yeah, Booby. You know, down at down in Miami. Boogie, Shouts Booby, Booby, Pookie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Po- yeah, Boo, Boo, Boo. Yeah, and shit. <laughs> I got a cousin Boo Boo. Shouts to Boo Boo Sanders. Yep. Well, y'all got <laughs> a couple. He's like we were laughing like these niggas with these crazy ass names and shit. <laughs> they got some funny names too, but we're not gonna turn that into, into yeah. you know. Everybody's uh Anthony. We're not gonna make it weird. <laughs> all, all, all the all the all the Italians' middle name is Ant. They're all, they're all Anthony. That's my middle name. That's How that's a New that? York Italian thing, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. That's a different. That's a different that Italian. My name. And, and, and Nick is unapologetically Sicilian. 
City Island, Bronx, yeah, BX for real. Reside in Queens. There you go. My wife yeah. is unapologetically Queens. And when you go to the, when you go to, I know we're branching off real quick. When you go to his mom and dad's house, the food is popping. Yeah, that's the one thing. Crazy. I still think about fucking. <laughs> Shouts to mother and dad and, da- and, and pop react. There you go. They got the outdoor pizza oven and shit. It's that's great. beautiful, man. <laughs> that bro, I still miss Italian food to this day. Like, mm. that shit, it ain't no way around yeah. that stuff, man. Next time you come up to New York, bro, we'll take I'm care in. of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We need that. I remember lasagna out there, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> what the fuck? What mm-hmm. is this? This is not lasagna, bro. This is like some heavenly cloud on the plate, bro. Why is this shit like this? <laughs> <laughs> How is it like? How is it fluffy? Like, I don't know. It's, I, yeah, the, yeah. The, food is, the food is different out Man. there. It's not like, yeah, it's not the same type of Italian food that you're probably used to when you come to the United States and eat it's that rough shit. Off I think we need, to go totally visit, we, we need to go visit your cousins, uh, Nick. I think we. Me, oh yeah, let's go. Let's do it, you, bro. Trust and believe. When you go, as soon as you get a look at what's going on over there, you are gonna look back here like, shit, we got it bad, food wise. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. Ooh. Pizza, fuck out of here. Carbonara, pizza, <laughs> like like pasta, man, bro. It's ter- we got it bad, bro. Produce, uh, just like fruit and veggies. It's rough, bro. It's yeah. Rough. That's another I, we we can go down a whole another wormhole yeah, with that. Oh it's, yeah, it's forget rough, yeah. Bro. Like, I, get book get. Get get getting back to um to to um you wearing uh, many hats as you do. I'm, I think I'm going to pause that one because I know somebody's listening and they'll be like, "Yo, many oh, hats, bro! Boy. Come on, man, it's out of control. What are <laughs> Yo, you doing? Son, that's it. Hey, many Yo, hats. Son. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. Hey, Yo, right. um, you're a producer, and then I see that you were a photographer, and you were a photographer um for for Jeezy. Yeah. Um. Uh, future was it future? Yeah, that's crazy. Yep. Um, and Schoolboy Q. Yep. Speak to that because I think you. I think you said uh, before uh, we were recording. So you had some, yeah, some, maybe some funny stories or a story or man, the Jeezy gig. How I got that gig. That's a funny ass story. So yeah, bro, yeah. I just wanted to do that. With you, with shout out to Jeezy. Jeezy. <laughs> off off the break though. Shout out to bro for fucking taking me around the world and giving me an opportunity to make some money with my art. That was. That's fucking. That's what's you know up. What I mean? Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that shit is something I'm gonna forever be grateful for. You know what I mean? Did you fear for your life because he was in some shit? I mean, I'm gonna be honest with time. you. You know, it was some tense moments or whatever, but yeah. I'm s- super grateful for that shit, bro. Like, oh, okay. You know, above and beyond anything else, like just being in that environment with them people, like it gave me a lot of insight and a lot of understanding. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That shit is like music college one on one. Like I learned so much just from fucking being around you know what i mean outside of yeah. photography and all the music shit but how to run a business and what that shit looks like to to operate at that level you know what i mean like it's, yeah it's invaluable you you can't replace like there's nothing i could pay to go get that kind of knowledge you know what i mean anyway so i'm in the studio shooting a, a day in a life piece for estelle so shout out to my manager bishop his people's uh big mike mm-hmm. and but yeah i'm in the studio shooting a day in a life piece for estelle and uh we shot at a couple different venues in the city they came to atlanta and uh, one of the last pieces was a studio session, and Jeezy's there. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not allowed to go in the control room. I got to stand out, you know, shooting through the window and shit, you know. I'm a peon, <laughs> goddamn, you know. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, they, they finally let me in, you know, and, and shout out to Mike. Mike says, hey, you know, whoop, 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 you're going on tour. You should work with my guy. He's good. Jeezy's like, yeah, man, be in Orlando. I'm in Atlanta. Be in Orlando uh-huh. uh, on, like, Friday, you know, All-Star Weekend. Put something together for me, and if it's dope, maybe we can work on something. No problem, bro. I'm broke. I don't have a car. You know what I'm saying? I have no way to get to Orlando, yeah. but bet. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. so I, I rent a car. It, it, yeah. Like, we had a little round away $100 rental situation. You, you know, you could go 50 miles in it. I drove that bitch to Orlando. <laughs> 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 you know, it was like a it was a one day riddle. I kept it for a weekend. You feel me, like man? But I, you know, uh, shot the video, did my thing, sent it to bro, and he was like, "Cool, hop on a bus." Oh, word! Yeah. So we essentially stole a goddamn car to make that shit happen, but we made it happen, baby. And, and yeah, and, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. he was yeah. like, "Hey, um, I, I got like a." 
fifteen hundred dollar charge for this, <laughs> <laughs> this car yeah. that I took. <laughs> yeah, man, for real. But well, yeah, that was the move, man. It was one of them situations. Like I don't know how I'm gonna make this shit happen, but I'm definitely not about to not do it. Wow. I'm definitely not about to wonder what that shit would have been like. That's not what's about to happen. So were you pushing the beats? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Nah. But you know what I'm saying? I was I was just trying not to fuck that video up. Really is what I was trying to do. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the ice cream man ain't gonna be too happy. Yeah, if I'm I, not about, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. we got it was like it was like a little situation at the first show I went to shooting. It was like a little tussle in the crowd. And, you know, I, that's what I'm saying, man. He, little, he was he was hot. He was good. It was not really him. It was just like I think that environment, those records, and like the people that that really will spend fifty bucks to come out and you know what I'm saying, like it's just a turned up experience. And then some people, you know, took it a little too goddamn far. And I put my camera on my back, like, what we doing? Uh, uh, what's up? You know? No, nah, I wouldn't been in the DJ booth, like. Man, I was yes. I went nowhere near the stage, bro. I was like, I was oh. on the I was on the floor <laughs> shooting up at the stage trying to get the shot. And then some dude like, hey, watch out and push me and shit. And then like now we going back and forth. And then uh, while we going back and forth, the people on stage is going back and forth with somebody else. It was like, this is a mess, bro. Like, what is what did I get myself oh, into? But but nah, that was yeah. that was my introduction. It's an experience, man. It really was, bro. And then like it wasn't like that the whole tour. Uh, it's different, right. different little, you know what I mean? Whatever situations. We could talk about them shits off camera, but fuck yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But nah, man, I wouldn't trade that shit for the world. Like, it was a beautiful thing to, to be a part of and see, like, fucking country to country. Like, because it was a world tour. You know what I mean? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Dope. Yeah. I ain't mean, like, I, I, I ain't had no business being in them situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in penthouse suites and shit. And, I still would have been like, hey, man. So, so were you were you the stolen drums at the time? Hell no, I was Chris. Oh yeah, oh okay. I was I was the homie Chris <laughs> with a camera. Uh, that's I was yeah. Camera Chris, that's me. Cameraman, that was my name on the bus. Cameraman. Oh shit, that was me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, cool. I'm here, baby. What you need? You know, bro. I ain't even had no MacBook. I had my iMac at the crib. That's that's all I had. And I oh I yeah. didn't have a, I didn't have enough money to buy a laptop, so I carried my iMac on a bus. I was holding that bitch like this, working. <laughs> <laughs> they was like bro what you doing with your iMac bro and I was like it it, it looks you know the footage comes out a little better on the iMac I didn't want to tell them motherfuckers like they had a buddy like that's <laughs> wild to carry that <laughs> the iMac got a better video card in it you feel me so that's why I'm on this tour bus with the iMac it was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh man I don't know what was worse uh, that or Ty, Ty Vin having to carry the old HP uh, heavy ass HP laptop to McDonald's. Nah, Tyvin with the time limit on Fruity Loops demo and McDonald's yes. is, is, is the winner. Dedication. I love it. Uh, one of, one of the, the funniest stories ever. Shout, shout out to Tyvin. And he's a badass, bro. Oh, uh, oh, he's nice. Man, man. He is. Tyvin's gonna learn how to DJ too. Very That's what soon. He said. Yep. Man, how'd you end up with school, uh, Schoolboy Q? Word of mouth. Yeah, it, we didn't work tight. Oh. Um, friend of mine, his name's Cam Kirk. He's the guy with the camera now. Schoolboy and them came to the city. You know, him and his homeboy had got like a day in a life situation with them. And I, I just shot a gang of footage for it. Ran around the city, you know what I'm saying? Going place to place, okay. hanging out with them dudes. But most of my joints were like that. Like, um, I shot a, a couple of videos yeah. for Sky Zoo, Torrey, fucking. Yeah. Those are music videos. Okay. Videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then, like, Estelle. I mean, well, shit. Mario. You. Fucking. You, you, you work with Sky Zoo. Yeah. Um, That's the bro. I'm sorry. Oh, this guy. Yeah, really dope MC, man. Good, and, um, good fucking human, bro. Speakers on Blast is one of my favorite joints hey, ever. That dude is a bad yeah. man, bro. And Spike Lee's Spike Lee was my hero is another one. That's that's my, yeah. that's my joint of his. Um Record's crazy. Yeah. He don't he don't yeah, he don't he don't get the credit. I think he don't get the credit that he deserves. Nah, man. That shit is that dude's pen is undefeated, yeah. bro. Oh yeah. 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 For real. I mean, you were with Sky Zoo, you were um Earth Gang. Mm -hmm. That was a crazy um, session. Make, yeah, Mick Jenkins. Shout out to Mick Jenkins. Um, That's another. Yeah, DJ Active. Yep, shout out to Active. Um, I very rarely, and I told told you offline, I very rarely use um, your sample packs are, are amazing. First of Thank all, you. um, all the way from Slappy to um, um, Fresh Breaks. Where can um, people get the sound packs too? Make sure you post oh, stolen drones dot com. Oh, and his algorithm is it's on <laughs> every time I turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're doing, man, um, you're doing it well, man, because your marketing strategy is 
is impeccable. You, like every time I go into my emails, it's like, "What's up, baby? Um, What's going on?" Exactly. <laughs> you know you need some drums. Yeah. Do you have? You, I know, right? Do you um? Do you doing that by yourself, or you got you got help, or it's just me, man? I am a blue collar dude. Just over here, man. A working class man, just trying to figure it out, man. Check the check, you know that Andre three thousand shit. That's right. Hey, so we we gonna I'm getting to some music real quick. Um, you came out with these single records uh, at one point in time. Um, it was like a series of joints, and uh, I really love the 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 Mud Pie record. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, this is tough. Yeah, this is my joint right here. My oh, man. See, the, the build up is always just crazy. It reacts face. <laughs> he got the face. Hell yeah. The motherfucking ugly face break face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It do make you want to rap though. You know what I'm saying? But it's when just I'm, funky. When you I'm said- in the car, man, where I'm just sitting here listening and I'm uh, at the crib and I'm listening to it, I like there's only a, a few producers that can really pull it off, and you're one of them. Thank you, man. Um, speaking of which, um, I told you that I've never looped anybody else's drums in a very long time, and I have sample packs. I get sample packs from uh, you know a lot of producers I support. I think it was the Ugly Face Breaks Volume One, the first one, and I heard a loop, and I was just like, man, I was like, and I. I thought about chopping it up, and I was just like, man, uh, the, the, the loop is just so crazy. So um, I just want to play a joint called, uh, I titled it, uh, The Red Eye. So this is Stolen Drums, Eddie James. Hey. Stolen Drums on the drums. Eddie James on the compression. Ah, <laughs> you like that. Question. Eddie, <laughs> Eddie, what? Uh, so the loop was what? The drums or the sample? Um, no. Um, the the sample is a chop. Actually, um, in the beginning it goes. Um, it's actually a Tyler the Creator record called Sometimes. Oh, that's nuts. Oh shit! But I I just just keyed it super down, and then I just did the chops because it starts off with Sometimes. And I chopped it up, and then Stolen had, um, it was the drums. It was a drum loop. And then I built around okay. um, a shaker that I just put in. And that's that's basically it. So the, the, the chops that you can hear with the bass line, because it had a bass line in the, in the chop. So the way I chopped it made it sound like I was playing a bass. Super but, dope. Yeah, that's just yeah. super dope. That's the first time. I, I, never, I never do. And shouts to all these beat makers out here doing their, their kits, man. Um, but I'm just I'm gonna take your drums, and I'm not I'm not just not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna use your loops. So I must say to your credit, you you have definitely I was like ooh this I'm not passing on this. Do you have a uh, do you have like a disclaimer for these things? Man, no, nah, show me some love. Like it's all royalty free stuff. Um, so it's royalty free unless you got like that major label check, and then you know I'd like okay. a little bit of that. That'd be nice. I got kids. Of course, and shit, of course. Know? 
Um, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's whatever up until like a, I want to say a million streams or some kind of major label, major sync situation. How do you, how do you track that? Is that, bro, I, I just I trust mean, people to be good people, man. Yeah, that's what's that's up, it, bro. I'm, I, I spend, I got enough shit to do to where I can't really spend no cognitive effort on chasing people who do fuck shit. So I just focus on the good stuff <laughs> yeah. and keep it pushing. No, for real. You know, that's true. Yeah. yeah. That negativity shit is like, It'll get in your way. Yeah. Has anybody ever uh, like approached you and said, "Yo, I got this"? I got, I got yeah. A lot of people do that. You know, shit. Such and such on a on, on this record, we're using using one of your joints from the from the packs. Mm-hmm. You know, here's a piece of the publishing yeah, type shit. Yeah, or, people look out, man. As they should. I mean, but some of that, some of that, some of that shit is out of hand now. It is with some producers. I, I meant to say. Yeah, I can't really because some you know some people will spend real resource on trying to chase that stuff down and shit. No, I was talking about in terms of just like you know. Um, you know what? It, it, the the joint that we did is that's a co-production because oh yeah because you d- d- the drums are yours yeah. and that's part of that's part of that it's driving a record. Yeah, I love I love um, when people do that shit. That's so beautiful, man. When, uh, when people be like, "Nah, fuck that!" Like you own this record, and I want to you know what I'm saying honor that. That's beautiful, bro. I really appreciate. Yeah, that. man. I yeah. think I mean it should be that way, and then um, it's your loop. It's your drums, man, and that's the main thing that drives records, man. I mean, it it, it should be done that way. Yeah. I'm just talking about some producers that, um, well, if you use my, you know, my kit, if I have to chop your drums up and, and reprogram them, <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'll big up you and give you some, you know, I'm always gonna give you some and show love, but you didn't co-produce the record because I it's like me going to any other record and finding a kick of snare. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't have to pay for stuff like that or even, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think all ro- like you know? one shots is royalty free, bro. But I think like, you know, loops is loops. Like if that loop is grooving yeah. and you like, no, nah, this hard as fuck. Let me just add a bass line to it. And then you're good. Yeah. Then you, you know what I'm or even chops. Yeah. 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 That's no, that's that's a code. That's yeah. what I said, man. I was like, talk to us about uh, your kits and everything and, and how you got started with that. My, um, my old lady told me she was like. I was I was working with Melodics. I don't know if y'all know the company Melodics. Yeah, yes. Shout out to Melodics, man. Shout out to my homie Darren over at Melodics, specifically. Darren's the homie. But I was working with them, and uh, one of the promos we were working on was a drum kit. You know, it was like, yo, you should put together a drum kit. Woo, woo, woo. Working on it, working on it. I want it to be perfect. I'm never putting it out. You know how that shit go. Yeah. And my old lady was like, put it out. What are you doing? Stop tripping. Put yeah. it out. And I was like, all right. Yeah. And I put that shit out. I don't know what I did, but I did something completely unrelated. And then mm-hmm. looked at my phone and just saw like PayPal, 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 PayPal. Ooh. Oh and shit! Now I lost my goddamn mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, yo, this is before. Really, at that time, it wasn't a lot of people doing that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. at all, for real. And I ran ads against mine. And my, you know, shout out to Darren. He kind of helped me learn. You know, he taught me a lot about how to run ads, for real. Um, mm-hmm. and it really wasn't a lot of people doing ads at the time. And so at the time you got Timberland doing his master class and me essentially on a line on, on it, on IG that looked like, mind you, I'm not Timberland and I, I definitely don't got that kind of bankroll, but you know, <laughs> the camera felt similar. You feel what I'm saying? You know, I guess people just took that shit serious and they liked the sounds. So that, that kid was moving my friend. Yeah, that shit changed my life, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Man, that's amazing. That was a start. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I just, I, I really, it really, like I just took samples that the homies had gave yeah. me over time, kind of like EQ'd them shits, like the ratchet way, and put them out. I yeah. didn't know no better. Was that the first? It's the first um, slappy drums. Ooh, yep. and that, that 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 shit went hard. Yeah, people Pause. really liked it. And then um, I do. I, I was, I have it. I remember when it first came out. Yeah, and I was like, ooh, okay. Yeah, that shit got a um, lot of love, man. Do you like the term lo-fi? So this is like one of them terms that's been kind of like because you've been your name your name is synonymous. Yeah, I've been I was I was I was gifted this 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 thing. Like, hey, hey, you know yeah. what? You're lo-fi. You're you a matter of fact, you're like a prominent <laughs> lo-fi figure. And I was like, thanks for that. I guess you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I I really didn't have no content. Like it didn't mean anything to me specifically, right? Right. Way later on, it became like a political kind of thing, and it got fucking weird. But I was always like, it's cool. Call me what you want. You know, just listen to the records. So. Yeah, because I think sometimes I think, uh, you know, um, if it's just like super chill and the beats are going in and, and then you got the the typical, the four the 404 sound and all that stuff. Uh, you bucket eyes. Yeah, yeah, guys, like Mind Sign and... Um, <sighs> and See, uh, to me, now, that's crazy. You can't call none of them people that no more. To me. Oh, no. Yeah. Mind Sign is, is in, <laughs> incredible. That dude is a fucking maniac, bro. 
Oh man. But yeah. um shout out to Mind Design. Yeah, man. shout out to Mind Design, bro. Yeah. But like so you got him, you got uh really DB I Yeah, see. DB, that's the OG, man. Iman. Yeah. You got so many people from this space. So like they call us all that shit at first. It was like, yeah, yeah. all y'all loaf, all this beat shit that's like under like eighty BPM. I saw your picture. Yeah, they put me on the cover of that shit. Which was beautiful, bro. <laughs> I, I was so geeked about because, like, you know, at that cover, that shit was netting me, like, quarter million, 300,000 streams a, a month or whatever. And so at that time, yeah. I, I had never been in that position before, bro. So I was I was thankful. I still, I'm yeah. still thankful, to be honest with you. Like, this shit, a yeah. lot of people found me through that shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful for it. But I just didn't understand, like, the political shit. Like, and it was like, yeah, man, you know, lo-fi is not real. It's hip-hop and, and blah, 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 and all this fuck shit. <laughs> and then that shit, that shit made it weird. So it's a little weird. Yeah. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess they say, you used to say like, um, like Mad Lib might be the godfather of, I guess, technical, like, like lo-fi, you know. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't Man, know. look, we, we make hip hop records, bro. Straight up. There you go. It is what it is. Yeah. If you, if you, if you found that shit, because like, you know, wherever you come from and where, where, however you got to hip hop, if you got through it, yeah. through this lens and you call that shit lo-fi or you call that shit Albuquerque funk or whatever the fuck you call it. It's cool, bro. But we make hip-hop right. records. I'm not mad at the love. However it comes to me, I appreciate it. Yeah. The political aspect of that shit, there's, there's, there's a notion that like this lo-fi phenomenon essentially is gentrifying instrumental hip-hop. <laughs> that's, the, that's the notion. But it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer not to... I try not to overthink like that because it'll fuck you up. It'll get in your way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you, you'll, you'll block your blessings if you go down that rabbit hole too far. You know what I mean? You'll be in your own goddamn yeah. way. So, you know, whatever motherfuckers want to call me, thank you. This is hip hop. No lo fi shit. That's hip hop as fuck. Uh, Fire. Appreciate you. <laughs> so. Heat. The name. The name. Stolen drums. Stolen drums. Yeah. So yeah. as a photographer, when I was Chris with the camera, uh, I wanted to do a producer short film and go like do documentary work with producers because I always loved that shit. I thought it was dope. Oh, shit. And, uh, I was like, what should the name of this film be? And it was like Stolen Drums. Oh, that's deep. You know, I'll use that. Ooh. And uh, spelled it with no vowels because, you know, fucking 29, 2009, that's itchy. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it, it never really came to fruition. I used it for, like, some music videos. If you dig hard enough, you'll find old, like, performance videos with Sky Zool and Stiley and shit. And it, it yeah. had that tag on them. Um, but it never really went anywhere other than that. And then I, I got out of that shit and took a job for five years. When I started making beats again, I'm like, mm -hmm. shit, that name is perfect. I'm putting I'm taking yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. You know? That's, that's yeah. it, man. Bro, I gotta I gotta say this shit out loud, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll let the lo-fi thing go. Shout out to my buddy Boss from Chill Hop. He's a good dude. I like that guy. Early on, early on, we started we was doing some shit. I did a live stream with them, and we we're having a conversation. And I remember this shit like yesterday. And he was like, "Bro, your shit don't sound like our shit. It don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why. And that's why I asked the question yeah. because it just it's not the same thing. It's not. It's really yeah. not. It's it's really not. Hold on, we're gonna play another record because. It sound like some futuristic Roy Ayer shit right here. The grooves. Yeah, I love Roy, man. Yeah. See, it's just like it like I don't. I don't need nobody to rhyme on that. Nah, that's music, bro. Man, you know, I was listening yeah. to uh, y'all fuck with DJ Harrison. Of course, yeah, I, I, yeah DJ I was Harrison, to dope. A lot of DJ Harrison in that time period. I love that dude. Yeah, shout out to DJ Harrison. He dope, He's super man. dope. Um, man. Are you planning to work, or do you even care to work with any? Because your music just don't need nobody. Do I have any artists I'm planning on working with? Yeah, not really, bro. It, it comes how it comes, man. Um, I got a little homie. His name's Grish Smith. That motherfucker is super nice. Um, uh, okay. and then uh. My homeboy Wade Brown came by the other day. Um, 
But it's like it come how it come, man. Like I, it's it's like whatever happens happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make music, bro. I, th- I think I think you should do an EP. Okay. Because I've heard you rhyme. Yeah. I, I know you. I know you got you got you got bars, and I I suggested that for um theory has it. Oh yeah, shout out to theory, bro. Another dude. Yeah, theory man. I told him I say, hey, man, what are you doing? It's time. I mean, but he you know he's managed to put out joints with him rhyming on it, but. I heard you. I heard you rhyme, and I was like, "Man, yeah." I want to. I want to rap with some rappers. My my rapper uh, wish list. I guess kind of a wish list, but like my north star. Like if I if I can get a record where I'm rapping with Elzai and Fat Cat, I'm done. Like that's all I need. One of them, and, and I I can retire. I can actually see you and Elzai doing something. Period. I just I just want to be on the same record, bro. I could just do an ad lib. It don't matter. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. that because like listening to that shit like like shout out to Superstition man for coming through and fucking with me one time that's another cat I, oh, I yeah. got a couple joints with that dude's fucking yeah. amazing man Ooh. you know um, oof, that's a bad man bro yeah yeah he, he, yeah extremely nice but yeah like those cats I don't know man like as a hip hop head coming up like those dudes you know what I mean are like I don't know superheroes you know what I mean we gonna put that in the universe yeah man you do call your label hopes and dreams, right? True story. Yep. I always ask uh, Stolen, how you, you know, I call him time to time, how you doing? You know, and he's always upbeat. Every day is a I good like day, man. Like you have to be. You got to be upbeat. Hey. Well, it's a blessing, bro. <laughs> Stop it, react. I got videos of this guy, man. This, I'm going to show you the video of this joke. Here. <laughs> he dropped it. He dropped. He had the ring. <laughs> Oh man, this Joker had he has the ring camera. Okay, and he had he had a cup of coffee. He had cups of coffee and all kinds of stuff, the goodies, and he's coming back and coming back in the he house. He dropped it. And Here I, we go. He dropped it. And then I did my best uh, Nolan Ryan impression. Yo, this flung Joker the fucking cup of coffee. And he, had <laughs> like a and he, he just drew it. He was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit, I'll be mad too. Let me just give you uh, just uh, give you some context. It was like six thirty in the morning. Kids woke up. We had no milk, right? And they want to drink milk, right? In the morning, they want milk and cookies in the morning. My kids. So I walked to Seven Eleven. Luckily, I live in Queens, and I could walk to Seven Eleven. So I walked to Seven Eleven, two blocks away. Grabbed the motherfucking milk, right. chips ahoy, and, and two coffees. One for me, one for my okay. wife. And the guy said, the guy said to me, "You want a tray?" I was like, nah, I'm good. I don't need no tray. I don't need no tray. I'm good. More funny. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and as I'm as I'm paying and walking out, I said, yo, you know what? Yeah, let me get that tray. He's like, all right, go get it. So I take the tray and I start walking and I'm two blocks away. I'm not, not far. It wasn't a far walk. I get to the front door and like I just, I fumbled the ball, bro. Yeah. Like it just, shit just literally just like bloop right out of my hands. I was like, oh no. And then I Randy Johnson, the coffee across the yard. <laughs> It's terrible. Hey, it's, it'd be yeah, like that screaming. sometimes, man. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I had a good day that day, yeah. though. That's because you got that yeah. shit out. Yeah, yeah. you're I've right. I've been there. I didn't punch many a thing. Oh, I punched the door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, yeah. So oh, the coffee, yeah. That that's right. So the, co- too, yeah. <laughs> the coffee dropped. I got pissed. And then the key was stuck in the door, and I couldn't get the oh, screen door open. Now. So yeah. I... Get, yeah, so that, you know, <laughs> nah, shit, that shit is tubey. Yeah, I gave, yeah. I gave, uh, I gave the screen door, you know, I gave the screen door a two piece and a biscuit, yep. and then and they uh, instantly regretted that shit too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, my knuckles were killing. My yeah. knuckles were killing me. Yeah. So, That's how that yeah. shit works, man. You be like motherfucker, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, instantly, no. like, only like, thing you had to show for it instantly. Like, like, five cooking. seconds later, I was like, ah, shit, why did I do that? Who am I? <laughs> and, the, and the most important <laughs> right. thing that you wanted in the morning was that coffee, right? right? Dude, I walked. I I went upstairs. I gave them the the milk and cookies. I, I looked at my yet. wife and I said, "Listen, I'm going back to the store." <laughs> yeah, and I went back to the store and got two coffee, two more coffees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coffee on your pants and shit when you walk back to the store. Oh, I had coffee all over me. I, say, I walked right back to the <laughs> store. That's yeah, fantastic. I walked right back to the store. The guy was like, "What happened?" I said, "I dropped the coffee." Yep. Oh, so you would think he'd be like, "Oh, you know what? It's on me. It's on me. Motherfucker charged me." Ooh. He supposed to. I know it's his job, yeah, but like you, you know, pay rent. I thought you know, I thought maybe you know that he'd be joke a nice ain't got to pay You would have, you should have gave it to him for free and shit. shit. Could have, would have, but it's all right. Well, listen, man, this is this has been great. This has been uh, educational. Where can people find you? What's the YouTube? You know, Instagram, all that type of yeah, stuff. Stolen drums everywhere. No, uh, no vows. Any wise words for any young any young fellas coming in the game, real quick? Yeah, work hard. Come do on. a lot of shit. 
Make it a system. Yeah. Um, hmm. right. you are, there's a book, I can't remember the name of the book, but it talks about uh, two different orientations. And yeah. uh, one is perpetual failure and one is perpetual success. If you have a goal in mind, like I'm going to reach out for this goal, I planned it, I'm going to get there eventually, you, you're in a perpetual failure cycle. It's a fucking hot topic. It sounds like some salacious yeah. social media content, right? <laughs> but uh, essentially, you know, until you reach your goal, you're failing. And then the second you reach it, there's a there's a split second of success. And then until you get to the next goal, you're failing again. And that's a challenging situation to be in. But if, you, mm-hmm. if you're a, a systems guy or, or girl and your, your plan is to just get up and get after it on a regular basis every day, every day that you get up and get after it, you're in a success. So you're in a perpetual yeah. cycle of success and you just Ooh. keep your head down and keep after it. And then you fucking look up one day like, oh, shit, I did some stuff. That's a gem. Uh, Stolen, we, we truly appreciate you, man. Um, we should bubble wrap this this man. He should be bubble wrapped, <laughs> for real. I appreciate um, that. Looking for all the the joints and the content and the, and the kits, man. We thank you so much. Not going to lie either. Haven't watched one of your tutorial videos, but I, I'm going to go check it out. Oh, I appreciate it. it, it it's, it's, and it's so wonderful yeah. on the ears, too. It's just... You're really yeah. learning because he's very um, meticulous. Is that the word? I'm a nerd. I'm proud of that shit. I'm a nerd, bro. Yeah, as you yeah. should be, man. You know, shouts to all the music nerds out there, all the nerds, period. Right, let me do my little sign off real quick, man. Yeah. Yeah, um, go ahead. All right, cool. Think? Just my sound. Like, everywhere I go, no matter what I'm doing, whatever stage I'm on, podcast, whatever the fuck. Uh, three things. Life is good. Time is precious. Make somebody smile because that shit is tight. And there you have it on the Chop Shop, Stolen Drums, y'all. Man.